How's it going guys? Daniel here and today we have a review of the Moto Z2 Play from Verizon. As you can see there, the phone is really thin. You get your lock and volume buttons on the side. On the bottom there, you got your USB Type-C and your headphone jack. On the top, you got your SD and SIM card slot. And on the back, the camera is protruding out way too much for me. And my first thought is putting it down on a table or anything else. I'm just afraid of that glass being shattered or scratched easily. And moving towards the bottom, there are the connections for your Moto Z mods. So this phone is running off of the octa-core processor Snapdragon 626. It comes with a 3 or 4 gigabyte RAM and scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, going through your Snap, browsing through your webs. I have not seen any lag at all. And the phone is splash proof, so it's not submergible in water. It can probably survive through the rain or even accidental splashes or drops in the pool, but I wouldn't recommend just leaving it underwater. And it has 3000 mAh battery. So I also gotta hold on some mods. We have the Sound Boost 2 and the turbo power pack. We will go over the power pack first and it's very rugged. I like the feel of it. It's like a matte rubberized finish. It has a nice texture and it's thick enough to cover that camera sticking out. And to use it, just snap it on the back. It magnetically connects to each other and your phone will vibrate letting you know that it has connected. And since the phone is so thin, adding on that power pack doesn't feel too thick at all. It's still nice enough to be in your pocket. And you have the additional grip. Of course, you got your battery indicators and your charging port on the side, which is still USB Type-C. Now you got two modes you can choose from, turbo, and efficiency. So turbo means you just basically charge it until it's full and efficiency means that it won't start charging until it's 80% and it will make it stay at 80% until it's out of juice. And the battery pack has 3490mAh battery which is a bigger battery than the phone itself. Moving on to your speaker, it connects to the phone again the same way and you can see it is much thicker than the pad itself but it's still grippable, it's a little bit slippery and it has a nice little kickstand in the back. So once you connect it, it just automatically starts playing and no need to pair. This thing will last up to 10 hours by itself and it has a little charging port at the back. And again, it's USB-C to charge. You see the battery life, you can just check on it by swiping down from the notification bar. So the next clip, we're gonna let you hear an experience between the speaker and without the speaker. So next up is the Moto Gestures, and we're gonna go through the voice function first. Show me my calendar. Show me my events. Show me Facebook. Next up is the sensor, so when you're reaching for your phone, it will turn on for a little bit, which is nice when you want to look for the time. But if you leave it face up and moving around, it will detect your motion and it will get annoying sometimes. Next up is the flashlight and you just chop down twice and it turns off and on. Once it turns on, you feel the vibration and vice versa. Next up is the fingerprint scanner. You hold it to turn it off and hold it longer for your Google Voice Assistant. You can swipe right for your app switcher and swipe left for your back button. Now activating these gestures will give you more screen real estate because usually Androids will give you that bar on the bottom to give you those options to use. Now another neat feature is replying straight from the lock screen and you don't have to unlock it or anything. You can swipe up, hit reply, and the keyboard will activate right there. Now this is a great feature because you no longer have to scan your fingerprint or hit your pen to unlock your phone. Now this last gesture can be hit or miss to some people and you basically turn your wrist twice to unlock the camera and do it again to activate your front facing camera. Now the back camera has 12 megapixels and it can go up to 1.7 aperture. Like all cameras, they all love light and they do the best with light and taking pictures indoors with a lot of lighting, it does great as well. Now with this video, I'm recording the phone with 4K. It can also do 1080p with 30 and 60 FPS. Now we had it outside for some low light shots and it does surprisingly well. And from there on, I zoomed all the way in. I know it doesn't give the best image, but I just wanna give you guys an ideal how the picture will look like zoomed in all the way. I left flash automatic and of course, giving you a flash picture, the picture still comes out very clean. Now if you get your stepdrake close enough, you can still get some depth of field 
You can do this with most phones nowadays, especially with the help of that 1.7 aperture. And taking a bunch of buildings and architecture, it still looks great. Now going back to the video, we are shooting in 4K so it doesn't give us image stabilization. I'm still not sold on 4K on phone cameras, so I totally recommend going downwards to 1080p 60fps. This camera can also do slow motion. It outputs at 720p, and of course we did it in low light so it's not the best image. So overall, it is a great camera. It cost $500 and I would say it's a mid-tier phone. Of course, you get the option of adding more mods, which is great, and you get these cool gestures, which I also dig. Now, if you're a power user or not, I would totally recommend the Turbo Pack to give you a lot more juice throughout the day. I think this is a great phone. It's a fun phone to use. The only con I can see is the big camera protruding out in the back, which makes me think you need a really thick case just to even out that camera. The front-facing camera is five megapixels, and it has the front flash for your selfies. If you are a case user, then you gotta take the case off and put the mod on and it just might get annoying after a while. Again, it's a great phone. I totally recommend it if you are looking for a mid-tier phone. Well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys liked this review. Remember to like, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.